Good morning, everyone, including our PICC marketing partners. Welcome to the very first PICC series of webinars. And we are extremely fortunate to have Mr. Kelly Bird, ADB Philippine Country Director, as our inaugural speaker. My name is Roger Dimmel, and I hope that you all have an enjoyable and informative time with us today. Just before we get going, I would like to mention and thank our valued marketing partners. For without these companies' assistance, this webinar would not be possible. Our supporting partners are David Brown, Santa Solo, Ostai Geophysical Consultants, Ali Consulting Group, All Light Sykes, and First Metro Securities. Our foundation partner is Site Skills Training. Site Skills Training offers international recruitment and workforce solutions to companies in the construction, mining and processing, and oil and gas industries. Our principal partner is Prime BMD. Prime BMD offers their clients services for major infrastructure projects throughout the Philippines and Southeast Asia. Expertise, experience, and resources are applied across industry sectors of transport, water, ports, resources, and energy sectors. We are also affiliated with the Lighthouse Club Manila, ANSCHAMP, the Australian and New Zealand Chamber of Commerce, and of course the Philippine Mining Club. Our media partner is the Philippine Resources and Construction Journal. Ladies and gentlemen, May I say a few words about our MC today? A lawyer by training, Leo was previously a partner in Kisan Bing Torres, a member firm of Baker and McKenzie International, where we headed its energy, mining, and infrastructure practice group. He retired from the law firm in 2010 and soon after set up a consulting firm called Ali Consulting Group Inc., of which he is president and principal. Ali Consulting Group Inc. provides high-level advice on strategy, finance, business development in the industries of agriculture, mining, infrastructure, renewable energy, food and beverage, packaging, and hospitality and tourism, among others. Ladies and gentlemen, I now hand you over to our MC, Attorney Leo Dominguez. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the inaugural webinar of the Philippine Infrastructure and Construction Club. I also wish to welcome our speaker, who I will introduce in a while. He's currently in New Zealand, one of the better places in the world to be during this pandemic. Before we proceed to our speaker, I wish to highlight the following. Number one, we will issue a certificate of attendance to the attendees today, and you can request a copy from our Miss Joan Falcutella For your questions addressed to our speaker, please type them in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. I will then, we will then read them out to our speaker after his presentation during the Q&A. We will hold the Q&A after the speaker has made his presentation. I would now like to introduce our speaker for the stock market update. His name is Sandy Gillis and he's a financial analyst looking to educate clients of the stock broker firm First Metro Securities. He once taught finance in college for undergraduates and for MBA students. Ladies and gentlemen, I now turn over to our speaker, Sandy Gillis. Sandy, over to you. Thank you very much. Allow me to share the screen and come up with my stopwatch. Okay. okay. Um, good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Here's stopwatch to orient us to how we can benefit from trends in infrastructure and construction in Asia. We are surrounded by a lot of infrastructure projects. And we would like to know how we can invest in the stock so as to derive some benefit, especially if the Asian Development Bank will be putting on a pipeline of 
many billions of dollars for Philippine projects, this should be good for the economy and also good for shares of stock. So it should benefit you. I would suggest to look for contractors who are working on big projects, uh, among them perhaps hopefully ABB projects, and check if the contractor is listed on a stock exchange. If yes, we can buy the shares directly. If not, uh, they might still be open to investment by institutions and we can ask a stockbroker how to access them. For example, uh, here's an example of a listed company which is accessible to all where you might buy or sell shares online. It's called DM Konsunhi and the share price used to be 2 pesos per share back in 1996. It's now it went up to 16. It's now a 3. I'm hoping it finds its way back up to 16 over the next few years. Uh, the, con the business portfolio of PM Kansunhi involves construction, real estate, and energy and mining utilities. The next example is Mega Wide, which is dealing mostly with construction and some or airport operations. Their share price was uh, four pesos per share six, uh, eight years ago. It went up to 23. It's now down to six, but I'm hoping it finds its way back to 23 over time. They mainly derive revenues from construction and airport operations. They also have a bus terminal that they are operating in Paranaque. As for airport, I think they're running Cebu and Manila airports, uh, ground handling. Then there is Ayala Corp Energy, which is uh, another good listed company where the share price was one peso per share many years ago and it reached all the way up to 2.8 bits. Uh, to one peso per share in the first half of this year but it's back up to 2.8 so who knows if it might go above three or four or five pesos per share over the next few years they deal with renewables and thermal energy which are of course in demand in any growing economy now if a construction firm is involved in big projects and it's not listed in any exchange how will i invest in its shares the answer is to look for the right mutual fund uh, for example, there are there's the Macquarie Infrastructure and Real Assets Fund, and they have plenty of experience investing in infrastructure. So all we have to do is, in the Philippines, look for a global dollar-denominated mutual fund. Um, by investing in infrastructure and real assets, savings can grow fast over the next 10 years. At least that was the track record over the past 10 years. Here's an example of... Um, Asia Plus Equity Fund that allows you to access the growth in Asia and emerging markets. And the reason why we'd want to do that is because infrastructure has led the growth in sectors for the past 10 years. Imagine 10.6% per year for the past 10 years. That's very good. And it might continue given the thirst and hunger of Asia for more infrastructure. So if ADB projects uh, are on stream, then there will be many benefits, of course, for the economy in Asia. So I would buy shares of Asian construction firms. But also, I might also buy shares of Western contractors who bid for projects. Now, how can we invest in those? Uh, one way is to, to check where are the big time construction firms listed. They sometimes belong into a Standard & Poor's infrastructure index, meaning they're the biggest and the best, and they're in the top of the list. So we can buy them through a global dollar mutual fund. Another way is uh, through the global dollar mutual fund, you can access funds which are hard to find, like these global infrastructure partners in New York or Brookfield in Canada. You can also target Asian funds like KB Asset Management of Korea or Equis of Singapore. They're experts and they know what infrastructure projects will, will grow very well. Uh, there are many reasons for getting into investments, especially in infrastructure, to put it into your stock portfolio. And uh, you can also, if you wish, uh, go into shares of Western companies that might bid for projects in Asia. Let's take a look at two examples only. There is the Transurban Group uh, of Australia, which was uh, $5 per share back in 2011, and it's now at 13.65 dollars per share. So it multiplied money times 2.7 in nine years. And uh, it produced 12% of uh, growth in your investment for the past nine years. Uh, that's very good. And 
this means that he does a track record and we're hoping of course it's not guaranteed that he maintains his track record for the next nine years um so what does the future look like if we assume it continues to grow at eight percent per year the 13 dollar uh, per share could reach up to twenty dollars per share over time and there's a, another example, which is a bad example. This is a Spanish company, which was at uh, $130 per share, went up to 216, unfortunately down again to 137. I'm hoping they find their feet again. So this is a cyclical company, which fell into a bad cycle. This is probably something to avoid unless you're looking at, an, at the next up cycle. So therefore, uh, what's important to find out is whether the company has projects therefore sales, therefore profits. And if they have profits, that's going to be good for the share price. Uh, so the two questions to ask is, does the share price go up steadily over time or is there a cycle? In which case you have to be careful to catch the positive up cycle. Um, so now I, I think we can uh, do our research and find out which of the construction companies in the Philippines have many projects, have strong sales, and that will lead to profits. Learn more about investing your money via First Metro Securities, or you can visit my Facebook group, which is Basics on Stocks and Investing. Thank you for your kind attention. Back to Leo. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for that, Sandy. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little later about these companies. Please allow me now to say a few words about our speaker today who will speak to us on the topic ADB Philippines Program Overview and Infrastructure Program Highlights. Our speaker was appointed as ADB's new country director for the Philippines in January of 2018. Prior to his appointment, he was director of public management, the financial sector and trade division at ADB's Southeast Asia Department since 2014 and was also principal economist for the department with almost 12 years of experience working in the Philippines. Before joining the ADB in 2006, our speaker served as a policy advisor to the Indonesian government for USAID and World Bank projects for eight years. He also worked on projects for the World Bank and USAID in trade, investment, employment, and competition policy in numerous countries, including Cambodia, Indonesia, Nepal, and several Southern African economies. He holds a doctorate in economics from the Australian National University, where he also earned his master's degree in economics. He took his undergraduate degrees in laws and commerce from the University of Otago in New Zealand. Ladies and gentlemen, to speak to us on the topic ADB's Philippine Program Overview and Infrastructure Program Highlights, I now turn over the floor to Mr. Kelly Bird. Kelly? Thank you very much, uh, Attorney Leo, and uh, good, uh, good morning to uh, all the participants. It's uh, certainly my honor to be able to present today on the ADB programs for the first meeting of the uh, Philippines Infrastructure and Construction Club. Um, so in, in my presentation today, I'd like to uh, sort of split it into two parts. Um, the first part will be spending a few minutes on ADB's overall program for the Philippines, um, our country strategy and our operating business plan. So just to, to give you a bit of an introduction to the, to the ADB. And then I'll talk, um, go on and talk about uh, ADB's uh, infrastructure programs with the Philippines um, and I'll talk about some selected projects that are under procurement uh, either this year or next year which I think will be of uh, interest uh, to a lot of the participants today. So if I go to my next slide, uh, let's to the, the following, yes. So for those who are not so familiar with the Asian Development Bank, um, there are uh, you know, of course, our head office is in Manila. We have over 40 country offices scattered throughout the Asia Pacific region. Um, I'm in the, the country office for the Philippines. Um, there are two important documents that we produce um, that guides our 
lending, technical assistance, and knowledge program with the Philippines government. So the first one is our country partnership strategy, and that was approved in 2018. Um, and it's a, it's a strategy that uh, goes on until 2023. And this really describes our partnership with the Philippines, as agreed with the Philippines uh, government on uh, economic development here in the Philippines. Um, and of course, it's guided by the Philippines Development Plan and also their long-term uh, vision for the Philippines, uh, Ambition 2040. Then we have a sister uh, document, which is called our Country Operations Business Plan. Uh, this essentially lists all of our indicative programs and projects that ADB will finance and co-finance um, over a three-year period. So it's a, it's a three-year rolling do uh, program. Um, our current uh, CLBP uh, covers the period 2020 to 2022, and that can be downloaded on the ADB website. And that will give you detailed information on the names, the list, the list of programs and projects uh, ADB is preparing and financing with the government. Now, we're currently uh, um, undertaking uh, discussions with government now on our next uh, CLBP, and that'll be for 21 to 23. And we are aiming for publishing this document um, in October. And that should be downloadable from the ADB website at that, at that time. If I turn to the next slide, um, this, um, this slide shows the key strate or the strategic pillars of our country strategy, which guides our operations in the Philippines. And we're focusing on three areas. It's accelerating infrastructure and long-term investments, promoting local economic development, and investing in people. And under that first pillar, which I think you know, clearly the audience is going to be, be interested in, you know, we, we have three different layers of support. We support the policy reforms, particularly on capital markets. Uh, institutional capacity building. We work with the PPP Center here in the Philippines. Um, we have quite a large infrastructure preparation facility with the government. Um, we also work with the Competition Commission. And then we have uh, our uh, strategic infrastructure investments, which cover mass urban public transport, bridges, pedestrian walkways. But even under the promoting local economic development, uh, we have a number of infrastructure investments as well in uh, sustainable tourism, uh, uh, natural resources and agriculture. And you can see from these three pillars, um, ADB was, is focusing on areas that are so critically important today with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, it allows ADB to be well positioned to help support uh, the Philippines um, get through this uh, uh, health crisis, um, global health crisis. Um, we know that um, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating impact on the global economy, uh, and Philippines is not um, exempted from that. Uh, we all know that the first semester economic growth, um, or GDP, shrunk uh, by nine percentage points. Um, it also has had a major impact on unemployment with you know, something like, according to the Labour Force survey in April, uh, at that point in time, there were 5 million uh, job losses um, and a, a significant increase in uh, unemployment. Um, so having this strategy in place really helped uh, ensure that uh, ADB was um, prepared to uh, respond and support uh, the government. And that leads me on to the next uh, slide. Clearly our operating business plan that we are preparing now for 21 to 2023 is going to be adjusted so that it does incorporate uh, the government's uh, strategy for um, fighting uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the government does have a strategy. It's a very sequenced approach. And ADB's uh, CLBP um, will be adjusted to, to be aligned to that. And, and our ADB's approach is kind of, it fits into those three uh, pillars that we have there on the screen. You know, the first phase is relief. Um, you know, and during this period, it's been critically important uh, to help particularly the vulnerable families and workers get through the lockdown period. Um, we're moving into the next stage, which is the rebuild phase, and that's you know, to support the Philippines to repair the damage that's been done to the business sector, to the labor market, and to the social sector. And 
you know, the, the big concern there, of course, is that the scarring effects, you know, the longer term effects on the business uh, sector that and, and the labor market that this crisis um, will have, not just for the Philippines, but, you know, for, for globally as well. Most countries, every country is experiencing the same uh, impact varying degrees as, as the Philippines. So it really is a, a global um, health crisis. Um, you know, sort of in parallel with the rebuild phase is the recovery phase. Um, so our programs will be supporting, you know, structural reforms of the government. Uh, but particularly important, of course, is our infrastructure investments. And we're fo focusing on those infrastructure investments, which we think will have high fiscal multipliers. And what I mean by that is, you know, a $1 investment in this infrastructure will have the maximum impact on economic growth and employment. Uh, for, for example, railway investments. Uh, we believe that, um, you know, a, a billion dollars in investments in, in railways will lead to uh, $1.5 billion in gross domestic product uh, over two to three years. We also believe that the employment uh, multipliers can be significant uh, anywhere between two and three times of the, employment, of the direct employment that's created by, by railway uh, investments. Um, if I turn to the next slide, just to give you um, a quick uh, stock take on ADB's support during the relief phase. Um, you'll see um, under our, we've got three components of this, um, helping uh, vulnerable families get through the lockdown. So ADB delivered a, a $5 million grant in March that provided uh, nutritional food to uh, 162,000 uh, households in Metro Manila. And we focused on the, the poorest uh, barangays and, and we were able to deliver um, two weeks food baskets to those families. Uh, and that accounts for something like 700,000 individuals. And we were able to do that um, fairly, fairly quickly. We also provided uh, additional financing loan uh, to the government to help fund the emergency cash grants, uh, focusing on the, the 4P families. That's the, the families under the government's conditional cash transfer program, where families receive cash in return for complying with education and health uh, requirements for their children. Um, besides that, we also supported uh, immediate health response. Um, again, back in April, uh, we uh, approved a $3 million grant, uh, which, procured a, which procured and set up a modern laboratory in J.B. Lingard Regional Hospital. And that, hos that, that laboratory, um, we actually were able to set up, from the time we approved the technical assistance grant and the time that we set it up and got it licensed, uh, it was done within uh, eight weeks. So, so certainly for ADB standards, that's uh, very, very fast. Um, and that, that lab has a testing capacity of at least 3,000 uh, um, diagnostic testing uh, per day. Um, just uh, this week on Monday, uh, our, board of, our board of directors and ADB approved a $125 million healthcare project loan to the Philippines, which will add uh, additional labs uh, medical equipment, um, you know, PPPEs, uh, it'll have ventilators, CAT scans. Um, we'll also construct and retrofit uh, isolation wards in uh, 12 uh, public hospitals across the country. So it's quite a major uh, investment loan for scaling up the government's uh, health response, not only for COVID, but also helping to prepare uh, future pandemics, which are likely to happen. And then the third, com the third component of our relief phase has been uh, fiscal support. So ADB provided a $1.5 billion budget support loan earlier this year. Um, and through that loan, we leverage uh, additional co-financing from the government of Japan, $450 million, and from the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, which provided uh, $750 million support in that whole uh, CARES program. Uh, we're currently um, now preparing a Disaster Res Resilience Improvement Program loan of uh, 500 million, which is planned uh, for our board consideration next month. So, so overall, overall, it's been quite a significant support to the Philippines. Um, and I think we were able to do it because our country strategy uh, um, was well aligned to those areas that needed uh, support and help. Um, let me, um, if I turn to the next slide, 
Uh, just to give you an overview of uh, ADB's lending program uh, since we opened up in 1964, um, uh, it's been on average around uh, you know $500 million a year. And, and particularly from 2011 to 2017, ADB was lending approximately $800 million annually to the Philippines. Um, with our country strategy that we approved in 2018, not only did we scale up our program with the Philippines, but we also rebalanced it um, away from what we call budget support, although that remains important, but uh, most of the, the increase in our program is really allocated to uh, our infrastructure program. So infrastructure investments account for about 70% of our entire lending program for the next uh, three years. Um, of which transport alone accounts for um, 60 percent. So last year ADB lent uh, the Philippines 2.5 billion dollars of which um, just over half of infrastructure and that was a record for ADB. This year we're looking at around 4.2 billion dollars in response to COVID but for the next couple of years uh, we'll go back to our um, uh, between two and three billion dollars a year um, of which you know 70 percent will be uh, infrastructure programs. If I turn to the next slide, um, this is uh, just a snapshot of uh, our lending programs this year um, to the Philippines. <clears throat> we uh, have um, approved, uh, I think, nine of our 11 programs, and uh, we have uh, two, two additional programs to be approved this year. That's uh, a disaster for, uh, financing facility for next month, and our it's a green raise project, which we are planning for our board approval um, in November of this year. If we turn to the next slide, I want to go now turn to uh, our infrastructure program. Um, for the for the ADB, we um, we just back in 2017 we discussed with the Department of Finance, but also the infrastructure agencies such as uh, the Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works and Highways about um, providing enough resources to support the government prepare some of their build, build, build uh, infrastructure projects. You know, in the past, you know, ADB would have, would provide grants um, and it's usually one or $2 million and and those funds would be used to do help support feasibility studies. Um, they may may try to do detailed engineering design, but but clearly that really wasn't sufficient uh, amount of resources to prepare projects. So when the government announced their build 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 infrastructure development program, we we went and had discussions with the government about creating a very large financing facility where we would be able to hire. Um, on the global market, uh, top quality engineering firms that could help work with the government to prepare feasibility studies and detailed engineering design. So it was really about helping them to accelerate uh, infrastructure, uh, but also to ensure that they were, it was high quality preparation. So in 2017, we had approved a $100 million technical assistance loan uh, and then last year, we added an extra $200 million to that uh, to support the government's build, build, build um, uh, program. And I think that's been really instrumental uh, for both ADB and, and, and certainly for the government as well in preparing uh, projects. Um, if I turn to the next slide, I'm going to show a map now. Um, this is a map of Metro Manila um, or Greater Metro Manila. It uh, lists all our projects that we are preparing, either through feasibility studies, detailed engineering design, and some of them will be financed by ADB. So if you see on the um, top left-hand corner, we've got our Malolos Clark Railway project, which um, it's the blue line that you can see in the top there, that's from Malolos to Clark. Um, that was approved last year, $2.75 billion uh, project of which the first tranche uh, is 1.2 billion. Um, just to the right-hand side, we have our Angat Dam transmission, water transmission project. Um, the first project was approved uh, for about $120 million in 2016. 
uh, this year we provided additional financing to build a uh, transmission uh, pipeline, which is 126 million. And that was approved this year. And I'll talk about that uh, in a while. We also have our It's a Greenways project, which is an elevated walkways around the common stations uh, along EDSA. Um, uh, just below that, uh, we are also financing the Metro Manila Bridges uh, project, um, and that'll be constructing three bridges um, in Marikina. We're also, um, uh, and that uh, Metro Manila projects, that's now under a detailed engineering design stage. Um, for EDSA, we are planning for that to be approved uh, this year. Um, we also have uh, in, in our program, the MRT Line 4, which is from Otigas to Rizal. Um, and we're currently doing the procurement of the uh, detailed engineering design consultants. Uh, so we're at that stage now. Um, Below that is the Laguna Lakeshore. Um, through that uh, IPEF technical assistance loan, we have been working with DPWH on a feasibility study. Um, those feasibility uh, study has been completed and uh, DPWH is now uh, moving forward to the next stage. Um, we also have um, linked with the Malolos Clark Railway project. We also have that South Commuter Railway project, which is also the blue line from uh, um, the uh, Tutaban down all the way down to um, uh, Columba. Um, that also includes uh, a tunnel uh, for the Manila uh, Metro subway that's been financed by JICA. So the whole, the, the whole cost of that project will be around $4 billion. Now, both the Malalos Clark Railway and the South Commuter Railway, ADB is co-financing with the with JICA, the Japan uh, International Development uh, Agency. And um, we also have, finally, we also have the Bata Am Kibete Bridge Project, which was included in the Build, Build, Build program, but it's not yet, but it's not, hasn't been included in their latest uh, flagship infrastructure projects. Um, we are still uh, um, in the DED procurement stage uh, for that project. Feasibility has been, has been completed and the government uh, um, NADA board has approved that project. Um, uh, so we're just now in the DED procurement stage and, and that'll be about a 15 to 18 month uh, um, uh, a detailed engineering uh, phase. If I turn to the next slide, um, we're also uh, focusing uh, our transport projects on Mindanao as well. Um, we have, three, two of that are currently being implemented and one that's been prepared for next year. So what you see on, on the western side of uh, Mindanao in the uh, Zamboanga Peninsula, we have our Improving Growth Corridor project. It's a $380 million project that was approved in 2017. And that's helping to construct and rehabilitate uh, roads along that peninsula and also including bridges uh, um, in Taritari Island. Um, that... Uh, it, it, it's, it's designed as a sector development project. So we have a set of three core roads that we've started uh, uh, that will start civil works soon. But it's a facility in a way and uh, new, new roads, projects and bridges can be added to that. So we will be um, procuring uh, con consultant services and civil works on a wide range of uh, projects. Um, uh, over the next two to three years. We also have our emergency assistance loan uh, to Marari that was approved in 2018, and that's helping to rehabilitate and construct some roads and, and bridges. Um, on the, in Davao, uh, we have um, in our program for next year, the uh, Davao bus modernization project. Uh, that was approved by the uh, NADA board uh, back in October of last year, and we're now in the uh, design stage. Um, if I turn to the next, um, the next slide. So I've, got, I've talked about the North-South Railway Project. That's what the government calls it. It's, it's a seamless railway link from New Clark City down to Columba. Um, it'll link up with uh, the various uh, MRTs and, and light rails uh, in, um, uh, in Metro Manila. Um, as I mentioned, uh, you know, we have the Clark, New Clark City Railway, which is in our uh, 
planned pipeline for 2022-23. We've got the Malolos Clark um, project, which is 53 kilometers. Now, just on the 1st of August, we awarded two contracts worth around $700 million, I think. Uh, one was to a South Korean company that um, is uh, in a joint venture with a Philippine construction company. Um, the other one is a, a Spanish company. Um, we have another three uh, contracts uh, that we hope will be awarded uh, around October. Um, and that'll complete the contracts for the first tranche of the uh, uh, Malalas Clark uh, Railway Project. South Commuter Project, um, we have this for approval for next year, early next year, but you know we've done a lot of uh, advanced uh, preparation for the project. Uh, including for procurement. And so the Department of Transportation and ADB are targeting to advertise the bidding of, of seven civil works contracts at the end of this year uh, and uh, with contract awards by the fourth quarter of 2021. So please keep an eye on uh, the ADB website, business opportunities for when those, um, and also DOTR's uh, website for when those uh, bidding documents for the seven contracts will be uh, advertised. Um, uh, just a, um, a note on our railway projects. What I really like about the railway projects is that you know these are a clean, clean uh, or green investments. Um, they will help to reduce uh, CO two emissions. Um, they're going to be designed uh, so that it provides three different speeds. So from the fast train from Manila to the International Airport should get passengers there within one hour from Makati to the International Airport. So it'll be, so that'll be the fastest train. It can get up to 160 kilometers, 160 kilometers um, speed. Um, but then there'll be other um, slower trains that will connect uh, a larger number of um, uh, stations. Um, if we turn to the next slide. This is just a artist's impression of the uh, station in Blumentry. Um, it will be a common station that will link the uh, North-South Commuter Railway with uh, the MRT lines. Um, if we turn to the next slide. Uh, you know, our Ungut Water Transmission uh, Improvement Project additional financing, that was approved uh, in June. Now in this map, you'll see that green dotted line. That was our first project, uh, which was the, the Tunnel 4, going through the mountain from the uh, reservoir. Um, that was a, that's a 6.5 kilometer tunnel. Um, it's been completed now, uh, and it was uh, completed uh, three months in advance. So we're very happy with uh, the progress of, of that project. What we're doing now is building the transmission uh, water pipe. A water pipe transmission uh, line. So that's that's the red dotted line, and that is that will be providing water supply to the two concessionaires. Um, this this is what we call the Aqueduct Seven. So it's a fifteen kilometer long pipeline, and it's about uh, three meters in diameter. Um, it will be earthquake resilient, uh, up to uh, over seven on the Richter scale, similar to the tunnel. So these, the tunnel and the pipeline, uh, you know, new improved uh, infrastructure uh, that will help to improve efficiency um, in the, the water system, but also be very resilient uh, to um, particularly earthquakes. You know, the, if you look at the tunnels, they have now four tunnels. The first three tunnels were built uh, between 70 and 90 years ago, and they are not, um, uh, significantly earthquake uh, resilient. So if you had a massive earthquake in that area, that could, could damage uh, the supply of water to Metro Manila. So that new tunnel now helps uh, protect that. Um, we are in the final uh, stages of evaluation of the bids for civil works and supervision contracts. And we hope that they, well, they should be, a, should be um, uh, awarded um, in the next couple months, and we do expect uh, civil works to start uh, later this year or very early next year. Um, if we turn to the uh, next uh, slide, uh, our Edsa Greenways project. Um, this really, uh, this 
this idea came from DOTR where they wanted to improve pedestrian walkways along EDSA, promote uh, walking um, and, and safety as well. So this um, Greenways project will create, construct about six, about five to six kilometers of elevated walkways in four locations along EDSA uh, at, uh, in uh, Balintawak. Um, and that's where there'll be the, the common stations with the met Metro Railway station. There will be an MRT station. Uh, so that'll be a, a, a line. So it'll be a common line. And we will be in, passengers will be able to get off one and walk to the other uh, without having to exit and, and cross the road. Uh, we'll have another one in uh, Cabell, uh, Guadalupe, and Tuff Station. And you can see on the right hand side what uh, an artist's impression of how the walkway will look. Um, what um, they'll be using some new technologies where instead of having two pillars holding, you know, two parallel pillars holding up the walkway, it'll be just one that'll be be required. So it so it will mean that it will not have to encroach significantly on the on the the footpath or even the road. Um, and there'll be some other features uh, that will ensure safety. Um, and allow people to, you know, promote uh, safe walking. And they'll have elevators as well. So that will be, in a, in a way, friendly for persons with disabilities, but also uh, senior citizens and uh, uh, families with children. Um, for the It's a Green Race project, um, we, uh, the invitations for bids will be published by DTOR in, in the coming weeks. So again, uh, you know, for those that are interested, uh, please keep an eye on uh, DOTR's um, uh, website. If we turn to the next slide, uh, Metro Manila Bridges. Um, these are, um, ADB is going to be financing three of 10 of these bridges that were approved uh, some, some years ago. Uh, these will be three bridges crossing the Marikina River. Um, the detailed engineer and design consultants have been the contracts have been provided to them uh, and they will be mobile they have mobilized and uh, we're looking at about a six to eight month period in designing of the bridges and and all the other uh, environmental and, and social uh, work that has to be done um, and we ex we expect this uh, loan project to be approved in 2021 and uh, um, civil works to follow after um, invitation for bids will be issued later in 2021 um, if we turn to the next slide, um, this one is an integrated flood risk management sector project. Uh, it may be a little bit hard to see, you've got the map of the Philippines, but the very dark blue um, dots uh, are the six river basins that uh, ADB and DPWH are looking at in terms of improving um, flood protection but doing it in a very efficient way and also a way where water resources can be efficiently managed and used as well. Um, so we're looking at six river basins. River basins. We're still at the uh, feasibility study stage. We hope that that will be completed in the next one or two months, which would allow DPWH to um, proceed with um, submissions to the, the NADA board for approval uh, of this project. Um, if we turn to the next slide. Um, that's it. So I've, I've kind of mentioned um, several projects that we're doing. There are others that uh, we're looking that we're considering that will be included in our CLBP in October. So I do encourage you to to download that once that's published. Thank you very much. Back to you, uh, Attorney Leo. Thank you very much for that, uh, Kelly. Uh, very detailed uh, and uh, full of insight of what possibilities there are for contractors as well as consultants. Uh, before I open the Q&A section uh, of this webinar, I'd like to remind all of you that uh, you should post your questions in the Q&A box at the lower section of your screen. I will now share the handling of this Q&A with Roger Dimmel. Roger has had extensive experience working with the ADB. So Roger, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Leo. Uh, Leo. Uh, what I suggest is that uh, 
maybe we can do a bit of a tag a tag team. Uh, although uh, I see we don't have a lot of questions uh, to date, so uh, perhaps I could uh, start, um, uh, and uh, maybe this will jog uh, some of the joint foreign chambers uh, members who I know are watching. Um, the Joint Foreign Chambers have been, uh, as part of their advocacy, trying to get Congress uh, to pass uh, an apprenticeship uh, training program uh, because uh, the Joint Foreign Chambers see a potential problem with the massive build, build, build in the lack of trained manpower. So uh, my question is, does ADB see this as a uh, potentially serious problem? And if so, um, are there any plans to assist uh, in this regard? Okay, thanks very much, Roger. Um, just before I answer that, I, I should also, um, my apologies, I should have also introduced my colleague, uh, Suchi Kimura. He's here as well, and I just saw that he answered uh, one of the questions. Now, he's our, um, he's our transport specialist. Uh, in fact, he's the mission leader for a number of these projects that I just presented. Um, he's also the, the transport focal for the Philippines. So he's here. So if you also have other detailed questions about any of these projects, please um, contact my colleague, uh, Suchi uh, Kamada, and, and his name is up there on the front of my presentation. Um, so on, on the apprenticeship program, um, apprenticeships are critically important. Uh, they're critically important for the economy, uh, for manufacturing, for construction sector, for transportation. And um, they're also critically important for young people who want to develop uh, skills that are marketable and that can provide uh, increased uh, lifetime earnings. So, so this is important to us. Um, you know, back um, five years ago, we sent out, uh, we, we joined a, a large delegation from the government, uh, TESTA, Department of Labor, um, and also um, mm -hmm. the committee, uh, committee. Uh, the, the, the Senate. Uh, we also had uh, people from Congress that joined us as well. And we went to the Republic of Ireland and we looked at a number of their skills projects and programs and they had just reformed their apprenticeship programs um, if you look at the philippines i think there's only about uh, from the data that we had a few years ago there was only about thirty-five thousand young people that were in apprenticeship programs and they were the duration of them were very limited you know it might be six months or 12 months um, so i do i do think this is an important area for reform um, ADB has provided uh, some support in the past in terms of, uh, you know, I mentioned it was the, the study visit to Ireland, but also providing some uh, good practices in other countries, uh, covering, uh, you know, how do you develop those programs and who should develop them and, and the duration of those programs. Um, they should be industry led. Um, we do have in our program a TVET project. Uh, that we will have approved uh, the standby for 2021. I didn't discuss it today, but that's also working with TESTA to improve skills training and funding. Uh, and uh, we hope that apprenticeship uh, reforms will be included in that, uh, in that project. But I do um, uh, certainly would like to reach out to the Joint Chambers of uh, Commerce uh, to, uh, you know, to, to also discuss how... Um, you know, ADB can, can work with them and with the government to improve uh, uh, apprenticeship program. Okay. Thank you very much, Kelly. Um, we have a, a question here uh, for, from Mr. Anonymous. Uh, he's asking, sir, we are manufacturer of plants and equipment for construction and infrastructure. How do we know the contractors of these projects? Now this, oh, sorry, this is from Robert uh, Belchica of Aztec Industries, Inc. Um, so maybe we can, uh, both for consult, uh, consulting firms or, and people who may be interested from the consulting side, could you just go over the, the relative sites that they should be looking at in order to 
identify the uh, potential opportunities that may be coming up. So, um, and I can ask uh, uh, Suchi to also uh, add to this, but you know, ADB's website has a particular page called Business Opportunities. I think it's good to register with them uh, and you can register with ADB. We call it the CMS and you register your company and you can also get alerts on uh, consultant services that are going to, that have been advertised or even um, uh, advertisement of invitations for bidding. Um, so please um, register with ADB, uh, go to the CMS, you register your company and your name and they will send you out alerts, but also always look up you know, on a weekly basis that uh, business opportunities. Also look at if it's a transport project, um, connect with the Department of Transportation's uh, website and if it's on other in infrastructure, uh, DPWH. Uh, we do know that once um, the, de the particular department has shortlisted the large construction companies, uh, that is also uh, sometimes uh, published by the agencies as well, you know, the, the shortlisted uh, companies. Um, if Suji, are you, if you're still with us, is anything else uh, you would like to add for that? Suji, are there? Are you there? Sorry, actually, I, I was talking to the computer. I'm sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all so, we all do that. <laughs> yeah, and um, sorry. So uh, basically, you know, all the information we can uh, disclose is uh, on the website. So please check ADB, so business uh, opportunity website. But I know that you know some uh, the contractors already have some agreement with the suppliers before you know uh, submitting the proposals to ADB. So I think you know first we, we also uh, disclose the so-called procurement plan. So when these contract package will be procured, sometimes it's delayed. It's you know, uh, it, sometimes it changes. But you can foresee you know what kind of a contract will be coming like next quarter, next two one to two quarter. So uh, you can already kind of discuss with the business partner, like especially general contractors. Okay, so you know uh, who are you working together for this equipment? This kind of activity can be done, I think. So yeah, that's from my side. Yeah, perhaps uh, what what we can do is, is uh, um, put up some of the the uh, the relevant websites on our on our website. Uh, and uh, Kelly, there is also a, a question about whether uh, your presentation will be available. So um, may I ask if we can put that up on our website too, so you can, uh, so they can actually review it uh, again? Yes, certainly. Okay, great. Okay, uh, there's one question about uh, whether there. It does not look like there are any ADB plans for the Visayas. Uh, will there be any plans for the Visayas in the future? This is from Robert es Escano. Okay. Um, now, we, we do have some projects that are close to completion in the Visayas. Um, there's a road improvements uh, project. Um, but uh, on that flood, um, flood risk, risk uh, and protection project, uh, one of the river basins is in Visayas, um, in the western Visayas. So that's one project that we have. Uh, but we are certainly, you know, talking to the national government um, about how we can uh, further expand our support, particularly to the Visayas. Um, while not in Visayas per se, but we, are, we do have a sustainable tourism project in Palawan. Uh, El Nido and Caron, and that will be working with the Department of Tourism on their national program for environmentally sustainable tourism. And this will be about improving and constructing public utilities, uh, sewage treatment plants, wastewater plants, drainage systems um, that will allow um, improvement in, in the environment. So, so we're focusing on, on that at the local level. Uh, at the moment, we're, we're we're just focusing on Palawan, but um, we
We also have a water district project that's ongoing where uh, uh, it's a non-lending program to water districts through Lua to improve uh, their water systems. And that's nationwide. And that also includes, uh, you know, Mindanao and Visayas. But, but I do, I, you can see, uh, you know, our focus is still on Luzon uh, with increased focus on Mindanao. We would like to, to, to look at uh, engaging more in Visayas as well on, on the infrastructure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kelly. Uh, there's a couple of questions related to the EDSA green, greenways. Um, uh, one is, uh, will there also be any facilities uh, for bicyclists um, that will be integrated in that, in that project? Um, okay, I'm going to uh, hand it over yeah. to Yuji because he's yeah. the mission leader for this project. <laughs> yeah. He knows every detail. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much for asking. Actually, you know, we had discussions uh, with DOTL and also consultants. Um, yeah, so, but uh, in, in conclusion, at this moment, we will not include bike lane on the elevated section because basically, you know, current walkway plan is within the kind of diameter of like 500 meters from the stations. So to uh, improve the, uh, the comfort and ben, you know, of access to the stations. So currently, uh, the MRT, LRT one doesn't allow uh, bicycle in the trains. And uh, also, actually, the width of the, uh, the uh, walkway is kind of limited. Uh, it's not just because of uh, the land, but uh, like structural technical reasons and also Sometimes fire fighting activity required some space, so we couldn't widen the walkway, you know, at certain point. So now currently, basically, the walkway width is limited to like only five meter. Again, okay, effective width is like four meter only. So it's honestly difficult to allow, you know, both bicycle and the you know, pedestrian on the same slope. So uh, yeah, current idea is uh, okay. That's you know. Uh, dedicate this walkway to the pedestrians. And we may able to create some space on upgrade level because you know, we are bringing up these pedestrians up. So we may be able to create some space to, for the bicycles on an upgrade level. And also, as I mentioned that this elevated section is like only 500 meter. This is for pedestrians, it's kind of quite enough length, but for, uh, cyclists, it's quite short, so uh, it may be good to you know keep they can keep at greater level you know go through these sections. So this is you know current idea, but for sure uh, this you know creating bike lane is not a big deal. So after some discussions, you know could see the demands, you know a DOTL may be able to you know decide okay let's you know uh, use like 1.5 meter space for cycling, that may happen. But, you know, as I mentioned at this moment, the effective width is only like four meter and it's not enough safe for the pedestrian to allow a uh, bi bicycle on the elevated section. Thank you, Suji. There, there has been some suggestion that you put the bicycle uh, paths above the, the, uh, the walkways. Um, so perhaps that could be a second phase. Um, yeah. Uh, when yeah. and if they, these these walkways will be extended. Yeah. So uh, honestly, you know, elevated walkways are uh, expensive. So currently, surely, you know, near the station, anyways, the you know, station itself is already elevated. So you know, connection to the station should be elevated, and elevators, these kind of things, needed. But if we, you know, have more wider, you know, larger view along with EDSA. So in the case, okay, some sections should be at grade, you know, e for easy access from the other feeder routes, right? So, um, yeah. Okay, so future for, you know, in the future uh, cycling network, you know, we will, the DOTL and us, uh, will uh, think about uh, what is the best option uh, to allocate some space for the bicycles. You know, this is, should be uh, discussed in like larger network basis. Okay, thank you, Suji. Uh, there's a question here uh, about the uh, 240 million Davao public transportation modernization project. And the question is, does this refer to the train project of the government? I think uh, this question is referring to the proposed uh, Mindanao Railway. Okay, uh, no, uh, 
Can I? Get it? Yes, go ahead, Suji. Okay. Sorry, uh, this project is also uh, my project. <laughs> Let me answer this question, to this question. So this uh, Davao Public Transport Modernization Project is focusing on buses. Currently, Davao doesn't have a uh, intra-city bus system. Only jeepneys is running for uh, like intra-city use. Surely, you know, inter-city use, there are buses, but so they have only jeepney system. So uh, the mayor of Davao, I would like to uh, introduce modern bus system in the city. Oh, okay. And, and it's, uh, it's separate from the proposed Mindanao Railway project. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, yeah. uh, oh, here's, here's a question uh, from uh, Anonymous again. Uh, how long does it take to award a contract uh, for a specific con contractor? This is rather an open-ended one. But. Yeah, so, so maybe I can uh, uh, start and then Suji can provide some more information. But, you know, in, um, I, you know, everyone, everyone here is uh, in the construction business. So you know that, uh, the gestation period for a project can be quite long from the time you come up with the idea, you do the feasibility study, you could do detailed engineering design. And then on the ADB side, we're financing. Uh, we have requirements for environment safeguards, resettlement safeguards. Um, so that, that process typically can take, um, depending on the complexity of that project, two to three years. Um, what we've done in, in recent years is working closely with the government where we're able to con compress that period, that, that process. So you look at the Malala's Clark uh, project, we're able to, from, from our own concept uh, design, you know, working with DOTO and, and JICA um, and us, we were able to get that done in basically 18, 18 months, everything done and get it approved. Um, now, for us to go into contracts you know um so in an adb finance project for contracts we can do a lot of upfront work we can send out the invitations for bidding before we get it approved but of course we can't um have a contract awarded and signed uh until of course the loan is is signed um but they've also we've got a number of requirements for environmental and, and um safeguards so from the time that project's been approved say by adb board and and signed with the government uh the procurement process and, and signing a contract can take up to up to one year depending on the complexity of of that project so for example the malala's clark uh um project we you know essentially about a year uh, to uh, go through the whole whole process because we've got to go through evaluations, you know, the, and and we also have a following ADB procurement guidelines. We have set times for each step of that process um, to ensure that it's uh, transparent and everyone has the opportunity to do their due diligence. So it can range, you know, but uh, anywhere between six months and uh, twelve months. If it's a detailed engineering design uh, contract, that can be. Uh, anywhere between four and six months. But for civil works, it can be anywhere between six months uh, up to 12 months as an average. Sometimes it can go longer. Uh, Suji, is there anything you want to add to that? Uh, nothing much, but so, yeah, I agree that, uh, uh, that I think, you know, this is a contract uh, process duration, but it's up to, uh, depending on the uh, complexity of the project. My, in my experience in Philippines, at the shortest one is like seven months, that you know, that civil award, a uh, civil works contracting award, starting from the advertisement to award. It, the, my, uh, ex, in my experience, shortest one is seven months, and you know, like up to uh, a year. So this is my experience. Thank you. And if I may add uh, something here, also it really depends on. Uh, you know, the con contracting process is, of course, longer than the consulting uh, recruitment process. Uh, uh, those, uh, and I see we have a number of uh, consulting firms here. Um, the, the choosing of consulting firms usually goes a lot faster than the contractor, uh, simply because often it's ADB doing the uh the procurement system, 
uh, or sorry, process. Uh, and uh, also it's, it's not as arduous, you know, there's, there's not as many things that you have to do. So, uh, so consulting firms, and there, I would just point out, there are many uh, ways in which you can monitor, uh, as, as Kelly has said, to monitor the procurement project. It is a, lit da a bit daunting when you first go on the website, but uh, um, I think it's worth it. Uh, all of the information is there. In my experience, ADB is a very transparent organization, perhaps uh, far more transparent than some of their sister IFIs like the World Bank. Uh, so um, I would encourage you to do as much background as you can on the ADB procurement process because it'll pay off in the end. Okay, um, there's a, a question here. Um, what is ADB doing to ensure the long-term viability of built assets? Okay, thanks, uh, um, uh, Roger. And I can also ask uh, Suji to add to this as well. So in all of our uh, infrastructure projects that we're financing, you know, we must do an economic analysis. We also have to do a financial analysis to see if it is it is viable, you know, based on demand projections and so on. Um, and, uh, um, and 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 working with the government, you know, they're adopting a a hybrid uh, approach. Um, you know, the public assets can be built, but the um, operations might be privately done. So the North South Commuter Railway assets will belong to the to the government, but the operator will be private. And and so that's that's going through. You know, in terms of tariff setting and those contract uh, arrangements will be done. You know, between the government and those private operators, but. Um, you know, on our estimations for the Malolos Clark Railway project, for example, um, there will be a point in time around 2030 where that uh, entire line will be financially sustainable um, on the projection that, you know, it's something like 700,000 passengers per day. So we do look at this very, very carefully. There may be cases where particular infrastructure projects, we will require um, what we call a viability gap funding or, or some kind of, of subsidy. Um, and that's usually justified on the grounds that it's important uh, to ensure that the public uh, take up use of, of these infrastructures. Um, uh, um, Suji, is there anything you want to add uh, to this? So from engineering side, okay, for sure, you know, we are we request the executing agencies to have the structure, you know, supervision consultant contractor and us. And also ADB is uh, heavily involved in like monitoring the progress of the project. So uh, usually, you know, I myself also go to the missions and to check you know, what's going on on site. So, and instruct to instruct the supervision consultants and the contractors. Okay, so some quality, you know, uh, how to build those kind of methods is okay or not. So uh, during this process, you know, we try to uh, improve the quality of the, uh, the building structures. So, so, you know, some check and checking process is already embedded in the ADB loan process, the loan project. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, my good friend Peter Wallace is asking if ADB is helping with the national ID system. Okay, um, uh, uh, ADB has, has been providing uh, support uh, at the technical assistance uh, level um, on uh, communi you know, developing communications uh, and on procurement. Uh, so we have had a, a team of uh, consultants over the last couple of years. Um, this is done, of course, jointly with uh, other development partners um, and under the leadership of NADA. Um, uh, this is a project of the Philippine Statistical Agency, but uh, they have a council uh, with a number of the number of government stakeholders and uh, other other stakeholders. Um, it's led by NADA. And, uh, and they've coordinated it uh, extremely well. And ADB is one, one, one of the uh, development partners that are providing um, specific uh, technical assistance 
um, over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. Um, we also have been, uh, and, and I, um, I think the, the government's target is to, to start uh, registering uh, 5 million uh, Filipinos in the first phase of the um, FILSIS uh, rollout, uh, which would, um, we all hope would start around November, December, or, or a little bit earlier. Um, uh, it's also been supported by our financial inclusion um, program, uh, and that loan was approved a couple of weeks back as well. Um, so we, we have provided support through technical assistance, but also uh, through our financial inclusion um, reform program. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Um, I have a note from our MC, Leo, who uh, has received apparently a, a few questions over his text uh, messaging. So I'll just turn it over to Leo uh, for him to raise these questions. Thank you very much, Roger. Um, one question is, does the ADB provide funding for solid waste management and WTE projects, particularly in outlying municipalities? Okay. Um, on, on this one, we do, um, we have uh, a number of possibilities. So um, for wastewater management, um, for example, our Tour sustainable tourism development project, uh, which is being prepared uh, for next year in Corona and El Nido, that's um, uh, ADB will be supporting the financing of that kind of uh, infrastructure, um, uh, it, and, and it comes under our livable cities as strategy. Um, we have, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we have a project with Lua that's uh, on land into water districts to help them improve, uh, rehabilitate, improve efficiency of their water systems. So, so we do do it. Um, the way that it's done, though, is that it has to be, uh, if it's a sovereign loan, which is a loan from ADB to the government, it has to be a project that uh, is a project of national government agency in that particular sector. It also has to be approved by the NADA board before we would um, look at financing it. But we also have, um, that's for the sovereign, we also, of course, um, work closely with the uh, PPP center. And we have quite a large technical assistance which um, uh, where we have provided funding for their transaction advisory um, fund. And so the PPP center will we also work with government agencies and LGUs in preparing uh, that kind of uh, urban public infrastructure. And we also have our own office of PPP at ADB that, uh, again, working with LGUs, can actually provide uh, transaction advisory services to bring such kind of projects to the market. And then we have our private sector department, which uh, which works with the private sector, either through loans or equity. Um, and of course, they can look at, they will look at uh, companies that have a, a good development impact. And, and uh, it can be SME financing, microfinancing, which is what we've done in the Philippines, but it can also be um, uh, public uh, utilities like uh, wastewater management, uh, surge treatment, water supply system. But they do have Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for that, Kelly. I have another um, comment here. You were talking about the Angat Dam. Uh, Angat Dam. There, there have been reports that uh, the West Valley Fault intersects the very old original dam wall, which is over probably half a century old. Um, has the ADB been involved in the review of that? Uh, the strengthening of the original Angat Dam wall in, in light of the West Valley Fault intersection of it? Um, to my knowledge, no, we have not been in, involved in a review of that. Uh, our, uh, our work's been um, confined to the, the tunnel and the water transmission project. I see, because apparently it's quite, uh, it's quite important because if that West Valley Fault moves and it hits the dam wall, uh, the Angat uh, municipality is going to be under 30 meters of water immediately. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, 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 
Yeah, so, so I would certainly um, I convey that to our, our team back in ADB, you know, and, and they can also talk to MWSS about that as well. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm done, Roger. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Leo. Just let me know if you've received any more questions. Um, yes. I have a question here. Um, from Jim Nichols, how do you know the funds you release for humanitarian causes and needs actually benefit the people who need it the most? Do you have checks and balances to place in place, sorry, to monitor and report progress and end results? Okay, now that's that's a, a very good question. So in all our projects, we have a, a system that's established on monitoring you know, on the field monitoring and financial management, all projects would uh, be, have to be audited. Uh, and then of course, um, an external audit by COA. So there is a whole set of checks and balances and safeguards that we've established with the Philippines government for, for many years. Now, just give you an example of, and that, that's for projects that are um, uh, executed and administered by the government. If they're administered by ADB, again, we will have similar uh, checks in terms of requirements for monitoring um, and doing our financial management. Um, but just give an example of, of the food TA uh, that we had approved in uh, April and we distributed in, in May uh, to 162,000 families in Metro Manila. So when we, that... that um, Technical assistance was uh, administered by ADB. Um, so we did all the procurement, but we worked very closely with DSWD um, in determining the, what would be the food basket specifications. Um, uh, so we would get that list. We worked with DSWD at the municipal level to identify the poorest barangays. Um, and so then we, we did, did the procurement directly. Um, and then we worked very closely with the Philippines Armed Forces in doing packaging uh, and the logistics and distribution. And so we had the ADB team, the DSWD team, and the Armed Forces you know, together uh, going out doing the, the distributions. And there were monitoring sheets uh, that were completed on a daily basis. Um, so we did a lot of, uh, and, and there was a lot of social media that was used as well. So we're making much greater use of social media in our programs and projects. And not only did ADB do it, but DSW, DSWD used social media and the Philippines Armed Forces made a uh, big use of uh, social media as well. So a lot of information was shared and was provided to the public. And if you go to the Philippines, ADB Philippines Facebook, for that food TA, um, on a weekly basis, we would upload the names of the barangays and the number of families that received the food basket. So we were quite, we were really promoting a lot of transparency in, in that process. So that was a very good example of, of uh, um, you know, a very good collaboration with the government in terms of uh, working together in procurement, distribution, monitoring, but also making good use of uh, social media. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, uh, here's an interesting one. Uh, how does the Philippine government able to pay for all of these loans? Does the ADB have maximum limit of loans to be granted to the Philippines over the next few years? Okay, I, I think the most important uh, um, part of this process is that um, the government itself uh, when it does its budgets and it does its uh, sort of planning for debt issuances, it always does a debt sustainability assessment. So they do it, the, the Philippine Treasury does it on an annual basis and they do a fiscal risk statement that's attached to the budget. Um, so they go through the numbers and they look at what is sustainable and that's how they set their deficit parameters and their debt issuances. And within the debt issuances, they will look at uh, uh, domestic issuances against dollar-denominated ones. And, and certainly over the last 10 years, they moved towards the domestic market where 
70 to 80 percent of all debt issuances are in peso in the domestic market, and then you've got um, uh, the remainder in um, in uh, dollar debt. Um, so the government looks at this very very careful carefully, and this government in particular uh, watches over it very very care- carefully. They uh, have been you know over the last ten years of fiscal consolidation and fiscal uh, um, response uh, responsibility they have managed to get uh, you know an upgrade now to you know triple b plus which is a very good investment grade uh, for the for the credit sovereign uh, uh, ratings for the philippines and you know they're just one notch below a minus so they've done very well in that area so it's very important to the philippines and of course adb will always kind of look at that as well when we set that's taken into account when we set our uh, resource allocations for our DMCs. Um, but the fact that the Philippines has uh, had uh, managed their um, fiscal deficits and their debt issuances over time, and they got down to well below 40% of GDP uh, pre-COVID, um, that, that's allowed ADB to increase their uh, ceiling now to, to $3 billion um, annually. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I understand that uh, June Palafox has raised his hand. Uh, so, June, if you have a question, you can, you can ask it if you're listening, if you're still there. Uh, he may not be there. Okay, anyway, while we're waiting, uh, waiting um, we may have a, we have a question about contracting. Sorry, I just have to find it again. By the way, we have a lot of questions, so. Uh, just a minute here. Uh, under which conditions do you mainly award contracts? Uh, and he's, this is from Helmut Gisa. Um, and I, I guess he's asking under public-private partnerships, are they output performance-based, OPRC, design-build, uh, DBB, design-build, DB, design-build, operate and, and transfer, I guess, or operate. Uh, so, can you just describe, uh, probably both on the consulting side and on the contractor side, what your typical uh, contracts are like? Okay. Um, Suji, are you still with us? This might be something that... Uh, yes, yeah. Can I'm talk here. About. Okay. So, for this one... Um, Okay, so honestly, you know, this is depending on the, uh, actually, I, I assume this is basically for the civil war contract. So, um, but OPP is include some, uh, sorry, PPP is including some financial uh, arrangement also. So, uh, the first, okay, first government will decide, you know, how they would like to build some, uh, like project. So, if you know uh, this project is kind of uh, revenue generating and some cost can be covered by the revenue of the operation in the case they often think about ppp so in the case this uh, you know project will not come to adv usually and but once you know they have decided uh to uh to build you know kind of in a kind of as a sovereign operation which means you know uh, tax money will be used to construction uh, they will come to ADB and start discussion on, you know, what kind of uh, uh, procurement method is good for this project, like, you know, uh, design, bid, and build, and or design, build, contract, and uh, or design, build, operate, uh, you know, contract, a uh, concession. So, um, but uh, kind of traditionally, you know, we usually use, you know, design, bid, and build uh, options because this is uh, uh, like FIDIC, uh, you know, a pink book is already ready and kind of easy to apply to uh, the, it's kind of familiarized with the executing agency, also contract and consultant. But nowadays, you know, uh, I 
feel that uh, uh, the government of Philippines prefers design and build uh, arrangement a little bit more. So uh, this is, you know, depending on the, uh, the you know, characteristics of the project and also desire of the government, you know, how to, you know, uh, the kind of including timeline on the responsibility, those kind of things. So uh, it's kind of difficult to say, you know, in the short term, you know, which project should go to design bid and designer bid. But so I, I'm sorry, but I have to say that it's case by case basis. You know, we uh, discuss with the executing agency what is the best option for the, uh, the modality of the procurement. Okay, thank you, Suji. Uh, there's one question here following up on uh, ADB's support for the health sector. Uh, and the question is, most of the ADB Philippine projects shown are infrastructure, our bridges, walkways, and railways. And we are now in the situation of COVID pandemic. What infrastructure is expected for the health sector, uh, which are included in the mentioned 125 million approved loan. And when are the upcoming opportunities for this to be expected? Okay, thanks Roger for that question. So um, yes, as, as a result of the COVID pandemic, we've um, uh, reallocated resources to, to the health sector. And, and, and as I mentioned earlier, we funded uh, the procurement establishment of a laboratory at J.B. Lingard um, uh, Regional Hospital in San, Fern San, Fern San Fernando City. Um, and just uh, this week, we approved the $125 million loan project with the Department of Health. And Department of Health will be doing the uh, contracting under this, um, but it'll, of course, follow uh, ADB rules. Um, I, don't, I can't re recall the percentages, but... Um, uh, a portion of those loan proceeds will be for uh, reconstruction and retrofitting um, isolation wards in about 12 hospitals around the, uh, the country. Um, and the rest uh, will be on um, procuring equipment, you know, ventilators, scans, uh, laboratory equipment and supplies, PPEs for health frontliners. Um, but again, for the actual civil works component, um, we would hope that um, those invitations uh, for bids will be uh, issued in the next um, three to four, two to three, two, two to four months. So again, please keep your eye on that. Now, next year we have in our program is a program to support the rollout of the universal health care program of the Philippines. And that that will also include an investment component. Again, building on what we're doing now uh, as a result of COVID-19, um, and, and that'll be to help improve uh, the facilities at hospitals, but also uh, work with the government to enhance its preparation for the next pandemic or public epi um, health epidemic that may occur um, in the Philippines. So it is, uh, we are now um, reallocating substantial uh, resources to, to the healthcare sector, both in terms of not just civil works, but it's also equipment, but also capacity building and training of uh, healthcare workers. I'll okay, finish there. You, uh, actually, I have a quick follow-on question. Are you involved at all in the, in the testing and contact uh, tracing efforts? Okay, so the, the testing efforts would be um, by helping to set up, so we set up a lab under this new loan, we'll set up another two labs that, are, uh, that will be um, equipped with uh, the, the equipment, the supplies, and the trained technicians to do the diagnostic uh, analysis of uh, samples that come, come to them. So we're not directly involved in uh, the testing of it, we're helping to provide, and, and improve the capacity, uh, similarly for contact tracing. However, our health sector team at ADB um, uh, interacting with the Department of Health on a very regular basis, sharing knowledge with them on what other countries are doing in terms of scaling up their testing, contact tracing, and isolation uh, of uh, COVID positive patients um, uh, to help uh, control the 
the spread of the virus in the community, but also to help provide uh, proper treatment as well. So we do it on an investment project basis, but also on a, a technical advisory um, aspect as well. But we don't directly uh, get engaged in the testing or contact tracing. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Kelly. Um, we're coming up to the witching hour. Uh, we do have a couple of more questions, but I just want to ask you what your time availability is. Um, I think I can do another five minutes before I get to my... Five minutes. Okay. And, and you know, okay. Roger, you can also collect all those other questions and you can send them to us and we can provide a response and you can also circulate it to your um, members as well. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, there's, there's a question here uh, about the, whether LGUs can avail of ADB funds for their local projects. Uh, and it says, if, if yes, what are the requirements? Uh, projects being eyed are mini hydro, public market, hospitals, roads, and other projects. Okay, so it's, it's a little bit more complicated uh, in the Philippines. At the moment, uh, ADB is not lending directly to LGUs. Um, what uh, we work with uh, the national government in terms of some on lending uh, modality. So, for example, our project on water resources with uh, Lua and the water districts, uh, we lend to the government, they can. They, they will, um, uh, and, and Lure on lends it to uh, the water districts who then have to have to pay back. Um, for our Angat Dam project, it's a loan to MWSS, but it's guaranteed, you know, there's a, a guarantee as well from the national government. But we don't yet uh, have a modality for directly lending to the LGUs. So this would be... Uh I know the World Bank uh, funded a lot of the uh, community-driven uh, development, CDD uh, projects here in the Philippines, which I think was very, very effective. Uh, so you're not considering something of that nature? Well, you know, I think we certainly have been for some time exploring with the national government ways for us to directly lend. Uh, but we also um, can assist LGUs, for example, uh, through our PPP office or, or through the Philippines uh, PPP Center and doing transaction advisory services. Um, we can also uh, provide uh, advice to them on going to the market, for example, if they were going to raise uh, financing. Um, so we can provide that, but not yet um, directly with uh, LGUs. But it's something that... Um, uh, that we have been exploring and discussing uh, ways to do that, but we've still got some, some more work to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, I, just talking about LGUs, I suspect there's probably some money uh, under your, your river basin uh, projects that would be available for local, local government uh, um, funding. Uh, now, I haven't, it's been a long time since I've read the project descriptions of that one, but uh, I think I do recall that there was some expectation of locally uh, funded uh, projects arising out of the out of the feasibility studies. So we'll have yeah. to see. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I think I've exhausted all the questions. Uh, so at, at this point, I'm going to turn it back to Leo uh, to do a wrap up. Uh, and uh, first of all, though, Kelly, I certainly appreciate your involvement and Suji's involvement. Suji's involvement, sorry. Uh, and uh, we look forward to having you back maybe in a couple of years to see yeah, how right. everything has how everything has gone. Thank you very much. Over to you, Leo. Thank you very Thank much, you, Roger. Roger. Thank, thank you, Roger, really. and yeah, thank you to uh, Kelly and uh, Suchi for the enlightening presentation on ADB's uh, infra programs in the Philippines. And thank you to the ADB for for all that assistance. 
Um, so I'll be bringing this Q&A to a close, and I have uh, the following announcements. Again, certificates of attendance to attendees will be issued. If you're interested, please contact Joan Palcutella of PICC for your copy. Our next speakers for the Philippine Mining Club webinar are Ms. Juthamard Mardson of Ostai on September 11, and Mr. Stephen Lloyd of MMDD, Philippine Resources and Development Corporation, uh, on a date that will be announced. So the, we have identified two uh, forthcoming Philippine Mining Club webinars. Again, on September 11, it's uh, going to feature Ms. Juthamard Mardson of Ostag. And on a date to be announced, Mr. Stephen Lloyd of MMDD, Philippine Resources and Development Corporation. At this point, uh, and I think this is quite new to me as well, you can now turn on your cameras for a photo op. Is it working? <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> I can't, oh, I know why, because I can't see it. Oh, yes, okay. So everybody is Come invited on, Brad, to be part of this your... picture taking. Yeah. I see there's Primex there. Brad, turn on. Yeah, Tim. You're dark, Tim. Ooh. <laughs> like a crow. Ambassador Robinson. Shun. Mm. And we still have a few to fill, fill up the screen. Hi, Annie D. Joey, I saw him. Hello. Hi, Leo. Hello. Hi, Leo. I don't know how you're going to fit 100 people in one screen, but it's okay. It's a challenge. Yeah. I asked the question when the organizer said we're going to do this. It's a problem, but it's a good problem. The smaller they get. Yeah, the smaller they get. It'll be like one of those pictures of Jesus Christ with all the words in the Bible. Uh, let's hope that the, the collective photo becomes also interesting enough. <laughs> Hi, Roger. Hi, baby. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Still working from home. <laughs> and, and winning ADB projects, I hope. Yeah. We just won a uh, project in Tajikistan. Very good. Wow. 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 Sandy Gillis, get on. Yeah. Sandy Shy. Fernando's there. No, sorry, my computer doesn't have a camera today. <laughs> okay, Sandy. Okay, thank okay. you. Well, this, it doesn't look like we're going to fill, fill the screen, unfortunately. All right, I guess uh, we've given enough time for this. So, uh, let me continue to bring this day to a close. So thank you all of you for, for being with us today and uh, for your continuing support. We expect, we, we hope to get your continuing support for the Philippine Infrastructure and Construction Club. This is our inaugural webinar and we're so happy that you've joined us today. And we look forward to seeing all of you again and more uh, at the next uh, PICC webinar. So thank you and good afternoon. Good afternoon everybody.
But I know that you know It seems so long